Hello everyone, my name is Sick, and welcome to the fourth video for my NO1404 playthrough series. I did make another small mistake here again because I recorded this video thinking I was actually recording my voice as well, which doesn't turn out to be the case. I actually switched off my microphone because I was playing squad and trying to record a game of that. And for squad, of course, I have to uh, take off my or uh, turn off my voice over. Uh, We've stuff, never basically. had it so good, don't you think? <laughs> So I did record this video, but I didn't actually record my own voice. And so I'm going to have to narrate this after the fact, which is a little bit annoying. At, th at this moment, I'm trying to figure out what my citizens need. And they have to get some beer, which I already am producing. I'm just checking it out over here. I have a monastery brewery. I have the uh, a crop farm and I have the, the beer garden, I guess, where the monks are making the beer for me. But it's not going to be enough for the amount of people that I have, so I'm going to have to create some more. Which I can uh, actually afford, because I'm in the positive for the taxes. I get 160 free at the moment. And these things, they take about, I don't know, 20 or something, 20 upkeep in taxes, I think. And so now I'm just trying to figure out the placement for my crop farm to get some more bread and some more beer going on. Because I'm already starting to run low on both of those things. I'm not producing enough. So we definitely need to be more uh, productive in that car in that case. Sadly though, I'm not I think I made a mistake here a fair trying trade. to make this uh, farm or actually maybe the the other farm, I don't know. Yeah, I made a mistake here creating four of those uh, Farms and I only needed three, so I need to I need to destroy one of those crop fields and then I have room for the road. But then I decide to redo the entire thing and just make sure that everything looks a little bit better. So I place it a little bit more down to the right, and then I uh, try to make this a work deal by is always a welcome taking change. up as little space as possible, basically. And it works out quite well. I do need another uh, another one though, because if I want to make this uh, function for food or like for bread, I need at least two crop farms and one mill and one bakery. Otherwise, it's not going to help very much. I need two crop farms to have like the proper uh, amounts of crops coming in. And I do need to have um, access to the roads, and I'm just trying to figure out the best placement for all of these things. So I figured, yeah, I'm going to place the windmill up a little bit, I'm going to have a road going along the front, uh, along the fields, and then I'm going to have the bakery over there as well. I say, you're turning out to be useful. And this is uh, our tools and wood is being sold here. At some point we have a large shipment of, uh, of ropes being sold as well, but... To continue my building in the, on the other island, I need some tools because we didn't have enough to actually build the bakery anymore. So here I'm I'm loading up the Santa Maria to get some uh, get some tools, get some wood, some stone as well, and then I'm sending everything over towards the island called Kurast. And then I'm let's see what else am I doing here looking at the ropes product or the rope production or actually looking at the hemp production and hemp looks pretty stable for now because we have a lot of uh, linen garments and it's not being used completely so some of the hemp is actually being stored I thought like I would have enough hemp farms to uh, to uh, make sure that I have enough hemp being produced for all of my buildings but I'm actually producing too much because I'm getting linen uh, garments from trade agreements as well a good deal. Like you can see right now, I'm getting plus five tons of linen garments because I sell more than five, um, no, more than 10 tons, I think it was, or 15 tons. Yeah, I think it's 15 tons. I sold more than 15 tons of goods and then I get five tons of linen garments for free. An inferno oh, is destroying yeah. your settlement. And this is another problem. I had a fire breakout and that means I had to really quickly build a firehouse or fire station. Let's see where it is. It is there. And... It has a pretty big radius, Envoys but it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit in the entire Oriental town, settlement. sadly. And the problem was that I have a carpenter's house that makes sure that all of the buildings keep being repaired. But it, this building that just caught fire was just outside of the range or the effective range the of this thing. Sandstorm has subsided. Yeah, so we're looking at the sandstorm. It was on another island that was that did not belong to me, and it looks like Leif Jorgensen has finally reached Envoys, which we are looking at right now. 
trying to figure out where the Earth is building was, and it's right there. It's it's an envoy house, and that means he is on the next civilization level, basically. Whereas me, I'm still on the nomad level. And to get there, I need to have carpets, and I need to have a mosque before they can finally get to uh, to the envoy level. Right, so my ship has made it over to Kurast, and I'm finishing up making a bakery, and then going on with producing more beer. How wonderful that I can rely on you. <laughs> and every once in a while, I make a small trade. And this time around, I get 80 gold for selling 8 tons of wood. Consider it insurance. And Hassan Ben Sahid wants a trade treaty. I can't even pay it at the moment, but I wouldn't want to sell... A very or... ill-considered yeah. answer. I didn't want to give him all of my money, of course. So that's never going to happen unless I am rolling in Dosh, which I am not. <laughs> at this point, I figure out, well, I don't have enough space to actually build the or expand on the wheat farm and the hemp farm. Or not the hemp farm, but the, the herb farm. That's the one that I was looking for. And try to figure out the best movement. And now I actually managed to make it so that this entire area down at the bottom with the other farms actually is buildable now. I'm quite happy with the placement of this warehouse. Or the market building, I guess. I guess. I, I'm not sure what it was called anymore. I always call it a warehouse because that's basically what it is. But I think the thing that's... Or the warehouse on the coast is called a warehouse and then these other things have a, have a different name. Doesn't really matter though, because they kind of fulfill the same function. Right, now I'm just trying to place down the uh, the eight herb farms, I guess, or herb fields. Can't make it work in, for, in that little part there, which is a little bit strange, and I don't know what's going on there exactly. But it doesn't really matter. Try to connect this up by road, and I do also need an, another uh, crop farm. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best placement for it, because every time I try to make it as uh, space efficient as possible, which is always a little bit of a puzzle, but I figured out this was the best placement, just to have like, put it down like this and have it follow along the roads there. And then in the middle, uh, I'm going to have to build the, uh, what's it called? A monastery brewery, and that fits in in the middle right there, which is quite cool. And I did make a mistake in placement here, because I actually should have moved this a little bit more to the southwest. Because at the moment I place it in such a way that, um, well, it doesn't quite reach the, the monastery garden. So it's not getting supplied with herbs. And now we need to have a, a, a cart go over to the farm, pick up the goods, and then something else has to pick it up from the warehouse to bring it over to the brewery. And it doesn't quite work the way it should, so I'm going to have to fix that later on. I just noticed this now, actually. Right, I am creating a new route, or editing the spice route, because I want to have a, a sort of steady supply of tools going towards my oriental settlement. So I'm, I'm setting it up so that every time my ship gets to Goldford, it takes five tools and then unloads all the tools in its inventory in Ashabad. Because I am producing enough tools here to, to be able to do something like that. But I don't want to send like 10 or 20 tons of tools every time, because that might be too much. But 5 tools, taking 5 tools every time, that should be manageable. And here I was looking at uh, the carpenter's house and seeing that it was actually just outside of the range of the house that was on fire. Let's see what else am I doing. I'm looking at the things they need. So leather jerkins is something we need. And we need a church. And I think I'm looking at the church first. But oh yeah, we need glass to build a church. So I'm looking at the glass smelter as well. We need 25 glass to build a church and 5,000 gold. So we can't make this for a while to come. But I'm just checking out to see how I can place it. And I'm, I can place it up there and pretty much cover all of our, all of our houses almost. But um, yeah... Trying to figure out where to go, where to put it. I am going to have to expand with another marketplace for houses to go. And I'm already, I already remove a bit of road so that the church will fit there later on. Let's see, first we need leather jerkins. And I'm going to have to build that on the other side as well. And here I'm looking at, like, oh yeah, I'm not producing enough beer. But I already solved that problem by building another monastery garden, so I really shouldn't be able to, or really should not have to do much about it. So now I'm looking at the pig farm, 
because I need a pig farm and I need a salt works and I need a salt or a brine mine or a salt mine I guess but I don't have anything on the island of Goldford no salt deposit at least but I'm looking at Kuras and it turns out I do have three brine deposits on this island so this is where I'm going to have to have my pig farms my salt my salt mine my uh, I think we need a coal field as well like a charcoal burner's hut and that's something I'm going to have to start working on pretty soon. But of course all of these things cost a lot of money, so I'm trying to make it work. And I think I'm actually running out of money as well at some point. And I'm just checking out to see what the Santa Maria is doing. Like, oh yeah, we have enough wood, I unload everything else, and then I send it back up north to Goldfords to use to uh, get some more building materials going towards Kurast, I think. What building project are you planning? Now I'm looking at the nomads, so I want to make a carpet workshop. But to do that we need silk and we need indigo. And both of those things we cannot get on my own island, but we can get it on Rose Hill. The problem with that of course is that if I settle Rose Hill, it means that uh, Helena, who is currently settling that island, is going to be very very upset with us. And at this point I decide to probably invest in another small tradesman cog. Even though it takes up a lot of our money, I need the extra ship for another trade route. Because one of my ships is busy and I need the extra ship to, to do some errands around the place, basically. Let's see, I'm going down on gold coins as well. Only 71 income in, in, ter in terms of taxes. It is going up a little bit every once in a while because we will have um, uh, extra beer coming in. And if we get enough beer coming in to stay stable, that means our tax rates will stabilize. But at the moment we only have the one ton of beer and the 12 tons of bread, so it goes up and down a little bit. At this point I'm trying to look at something that I should be able to sell, but it doesn't really... I don't really have much to sell other, what, other than what I'm already selling, which is not all that great. So the Vanadis only has 5 tons of beer, and that's going to uh, be empty pretty I soon. Like it. At this point... I'm, I think I'm looking back at the uh, at the beer production. I shall inform the and see that it's actually not working at 100% yet. And that turns out because this monastery garden is outside of the range of all the warehouses, so nobody is actually picking anything up from here. I don't think. And um, or yeah, it is the one small market building that is picking it up, but it's going the long way around, which is really annoying. And I really should not have to do that. So at, some, at this point I'm also trying to find out where I should build another warehouse. Or not another warehouse, but a market building. To get to the to the salt mine. And to do that I need more tools. So I am getting the Santa Maria and I'm taking more tools. And I think some wood and some stone as well maybe. Yeah, always going for stone. And I'm sending it over to Kuras so I can start building... A, a mine production facility basically or not a, a salt production facility <laughs> is what I wanted to say meanwhile our new ship is almost finished and I'm going to use it for something that I don't quite remember at the moment I think I'm going to set up a new uh, trade route at some point ship ready oh yeah here's the thing that I wanted to do I wanted to remove Topaz from the current trade route and I wanted to add the Orca which is our new small tradesman cog and the reasoning for that is because I want to settle an oriental, um, what's it called, not a market building, but a warehouse. You're right, I want to settle an oriental warehouse on the oriental island because it has more people with carts walking around and it looks better as well. So that's why I put on the, the old trade ship and I, I'm emptying the topaz because I only have three slots there and we do need it to fill up with wood and tools and so a little bit of stone as well for future reference because we can build warehouses on the island and they require stone and that's why I'm already filling it up with a little bit of it so that we can ex or we can use it later on at this point I am considering trying to find another island so I don't have to settle on Helena's island but uh, yeah sending my ship has heard my prayers <laughs> we are enjoying a better life than ever before. yeah I'm sending my ship off into the fog of war but, um, yeah, just to see if there's another island there that I can settle and get indigo and silk from. And meanwhile, I'm looking at the mosque. And for the mosque, we actually need uh, quartz, which we do have on this island over here. 
the successful resolution of this matter depends on your support. All right, so we've got a new quest, and I'm going to be doing that. So um, at this point, I'm emptying out my ship as much as I can, and then I'm sending it over to the Grand Vizier. And it starts in five minutes, and it's a race quest. But um, yeah, the thing is, we need to have an access to clay to be able to make quartz, and none of our islands support clay at the moment. So One of your plans that's a little bit annoying, and we're goods. going to have to deal with that at some point in the future. Not in this video, though. Yeah, at this point I'm also considering building a bailiwick. And the bailiwick I want to place down mostly because it re it reduces the the upkeep cost for all of my buildings, which are quite high. As you can see the monastery brewery is 30, the lumberjack hut is only 5, but most of these farms here are either 20 or 30 gold in upkeep. So if I build a bailiwick, it reduces their maintenance costs a little bit. And it allows me to write notes to myself as well, which is pretty damn cool. But first, I think I'm going for the salt mine and the salt works. The salt works requires coal and brine, however. We, we can get brine and we have a coal deposit on the island as well. But we cannot build anything yet because, because we need... Because my people trust me. That's the only yeah. reason I was able to do all We this. need not only coal, but we need something else as well. And that is, uh, I think, not patricians, but nobles. And with nobles, we can actually build a coal mine. And the coal mine can then replace the charcoal burner's hut. But we're not at that technology level yet. So at this point in time, I'm going to have to build a, or a charcoal burner's hut, which takes up a lot of space. Along with the... Um, You've got a good deal there. With the... Uh, yeah, and this looks kind of weird as well, because the road feels like it's not actually being made over here. So I'm going the long way around. But yeah, you'll see in a moment that the charcoal burner's hut takes up a lot of space. Alright, now I'm checking out to see what we can get for this quest. And we get 125 honor and 24 carpets, which is really useful because we need carpets to get to the next level. And it's nice to have a basic supply of it already. That you will succeed in this, this time matter. I see that the uh, Sheik has an uh, improved silk cloth, which gives us increased speed of 20% and for only 60 good. honor. So I'm going Let's to get that trade. one for my ship. And that means that I am now a fully upgraded deal. with 20% damage extra. And extra speed, also 20%, and that's quite good. You have discovered another player's island. So at this point, yeah, I do discover a new island, and it does have access to clay as well, but it's also already colonized by Gavin Langton. So that's really unfortunate because all honor. of these people are you going to hate me oh, come in, won't you? if I uh, <laughs> if I try to settle their island as well, which is a problem. But we're going to have to do it because. I'm going to have to be friendly or uh, allied to all of these people in order to win the scenario. And, well, I also need to settle their islands, so they're going to hate me for it, and I need to keep up diplomatic relationship. Or a positive diplomatic relationship. So it looks like beer is Profit. finally going up. In more ways Same than as one. bread. And the ropes are really turning into a quite uh, good investment as well. Selling 16 tons of ropes and a little bit of linen garments or hemp. I can't quite remember what I just saw there. But uh, almost 2,000 gold coins for it. That's really powerful My at this stage in the game. Are already sharpening their knives. <laughs> right, so we have a pirate ship going around and it's already damaged but I think at some point I'm going to be attacking it and taking it out just to get rid of it. And oh uh, yeah I did so notice this little dolphin here as well which is really cool. It's just kind of swimming around the ship and jumping up every once in a while. And it, the graphics of this game look so, so good. They're really, really nice. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm considering the Bailiwick again. But it doesn't really work that well on Goldford, I don't think. Because most of the buildings here have fairly low upkeep costs. And the upkeep cost for the Bailiwick itself is quite expensive. This. And I'm going to decline Treaties this as well, the trade treaty with broken. Sir Gavin Langton. I couldn't pay for it anyway. But, um, yeah, you know, what can you do? I don't want to pay to keep trade treaties because I can ingratiate myself with them and get them for free later on. But at this point, I also need some more houses. And at this point, I think I'm going up so I can keep room for my church later on. You have discovered another player's island. 
And the reason I'm building some houses now is because my tax rate is going quite low. I should take this ship on a great and voyage uh, and write all about my adventures. How wonderful to know that you can be trusted right. with The quest has started, so I'm sending matters. it over to Garibaldi, which is the our next part of the quest. The resolution of this matter depends on your support. But yeah, I'm only at 25 income for taxes at the moment, which is way, way, way too low. So I'm building a few more houses so we have some more upgradable houses later on for the patricians. Because the more patricians I have, the more taxes I will get. So at this point I'm looking back at the salt mine. There is a lack of company in your settlement. And uh, trying to decide where to, if, if at all, I should build uh, the bailiwick at this point in time. And I think the I will Council actually. Of ten thanks you. Turning it around. Oh yeah, there we go. So I built the bailiwick, trying to get... Um, Basically, the tax rate to go back up a little bit. Destroying this little house as well because it doesn't have access to a road that allows it access to the marketplace, which is really annoying. But uh, something we have to deal with, sadly. There's a few houses out of uh, out of range here, which is unfortunate for the carpenter's house. I mean, and out the side of the range of the church as well. Which is also pretty unfortunate. So I'm going to have to build another church later on if we can. And that will allow us to upgrade more houses as well. And at this point I'm looking at uh, getting another marketplace so we can expand the our Council city as well. Ten appreciates your solicitude. I'm just trying to line it up correctly, you know, in, in the same line as the other one. And I think this will be a pretty good location, so I think I'm placing it down right there. Yeah. Salam now we get a road. Alaikum. And I really should pay attention to this quest because I don't have a competitor, but you can get a competitor with this quest. And if that happens and you don't pay attention, you lose valuable time and you will probably lose the race. Which is really annoying. And at this point now I can place these uh, these buildings here and actually build a road as well. And now I really should take care of this ship again. Yeah, the Council there we go. of Ten owns innumerable ships like these. They are the very heart of our success. Yeah, so I'm looking for a competitor. It's not there. And uh, that, that uh, makes me feel a little bit better, actually. But I really should have paid attention. So now we have the Bailiwick. We can have access to the Reeves book as well. And at the, the moment we only have the world statistics, disrupted. but it can tell us exactly what is on every island. So at the moment we own an oriental warehouse, three small market buildings, we own a bailiwick and there's like different production tabs as well. For example, if we click on production, I will in a second, I think. Yep, you can see all of the production facilities that are on this island, including the lumberjacks huts or a grand total of all the buildings on this island. And as you can see in the bottom right, you can actually create notes as well. Maintenance costs have gone down a little bit, so usually the mill costs 30 upkeep and now it's 27. All of these buildings have gone down in upkeep a little bit. And that means our tax rate has gone up a little bit as well. Or maybe at this point the, the bailiwick still balances out along with uh, you know, the, the reduced upkeep of all the other buildings and the upkeep of the bailiwick itself. Maybe they balance each other out a little bit at the moment, but the more bu production buildings I build there, the more I will save. How wonderful to know that you can be trusted with such important matters. All right, so how kind of I you! I actually got my carpets for the quest, which is great. My uh, ship of Topaz did, did not find any other islands that we can settle, so we're going to have to settle on Rose Hill. I've decided on that at least, which is unfortunate because we're going to anger Helena, and I don't want to, but there's no real choice there. She doesn't really use this island for much, really. She only has the one silk plantation here. And so that's kind of selfish for her to want to keep this entire island if she's only going to have the one fucking building there. May Allah you know? bless you. So I decide, fuck it, I'm to going to have people. to settle this island here. And I'm going to make sure that the, the carpets do not get distributed to my population because I don't have a production of the, of the carpets yet. And if they get used to it, then they get pissed off if they are later on denied it. Especially the envoys. If the envoys run out of uh, out of carpets, that is a really big problem. At this point as well, Topaz is pretty helpless against the pirate ship, so I decide to attack it with my flagship and get it out of the way. Because, well, the pirates are really annoying, they have to be dealt with, and I don't want him preying on my helpless ships. 
And the only ship that can actually attack this thing is my flagship, Santa Maria. Now, and it actually can be repaired on in both third action. <laughs> and I'm going to win this engagement because I get the plus 20 damage, which they don't. And even without the plus 20 damage, I, I would have won this engagement, I think, but just barely. Just barely. So we do have to keep an eye on it. At this point I have a lot of honor, around 320, so I decide to invest a little bit in ingratiating myself with other people. I have to wait a little bit before I actually click it, because at this point I was talking about my options here and my choices. And uh, yeah, I'm deciding to... I'm, I want to see what else I'm going to invest in, and one of the things I wanted to invest in is the Nomad Secret, which increases the volume of water for all Norias. And the Norias are basically the little uh, water mills that make the desert bloom into a green area. This is one of the small Norias right here. And it will run out of water, and so one of your plants has stopped the more water goods. there is in the mill, the less... Uh, attention you have to pay to these things so at some point I'm going to have to build or upgrade that uh, ability but first I'm going to extend or expand you had better find another island before we both become upset yeah and Helena is not happy about this at all <laughs> but at the same time the AI does not care about settling your island at the same time so I don't know I don't I really shouldn't care that much either because they will if they have to and so I should as well but uh, yeah, we're still in a very neutral, pretty neutral, and we can ingratiate ourselves back to, into a trade agreement pretty soon, I think. Uh, you're quite... It wouldn't have worked out in the long run. Yeah, she does hate us now, so she cancels her trade treaty, which is fine. She doesn't... she doesn't really do that much anyway. But man, look at the upkeep cost for these buildings. 60 for the carpet workshop, and then 20 for the indigo farm, and 25 for the silk plantation. That is very expensive. I can afford it at the moment. But placing those three I'm buildings is going now, to pretty much cancel out to stand on my, own my two tax feet. in turn. And this is something interesting as well, like Leaf actually cancelled out his alliance with me, which I have never known him to do, but probably because we're in a worse standing with Helena, he doesn't like us as much as he did before. And at this point I decided to build a small Noria first and let it do its work, because, well, you know, it takes some time to make the area grow green. And at, in that time, I decided to create a new route between our new settlement and Ashabad. Making sure that, well, all the carpets that we make in Merv, or Merv, I guess, will be automatically transferred to Ashabad, and we will add a ship topaz to it. Else I can help you with? Nothing is being made there, but I'm just going to let it run about its business. You know, I might as well. It's not going to be doing much of anything else either, so... Look at how slow my ship is even with the 20% upgrade to it. <laughs> Sorry about that, that was a sneeze, but um, yeah, this, the more damage these ships become, the more they will actually uh, slow down as well. Looks like we are at a full complement of uh, brine, so we finally have to start doing something with it. So we're going to have to build a uh, salt works. And the salt works, it also requires coal, which we also have to build later on. Let's see, I'm, I'm going to do that right now, I think. Oh yeah, the charcoal burner's hut. And as you can see, it takes up a really, really big space. It wasn't my intention to outdo you, honestly. He actually likes us for not keeping up with him, really. Everybody else hates us for it, but he is like the easy AI. He is actually just like, oh, it's okay, don't bother, or like, don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, the charcoal burner's hut, it is, its range is... A little bit uh, in, in in range of the small market building there. So it's not... It, in my experience, it wouldn't have to be at 100%, but it actually is, so... It's a little bit more effective than I actually thought it was going to be. Which is very good for us, actually. At this point as well, I'm looking at a tannery, which we don't have enough bricks for. And we need two pig farms as well. And the tannery needs to go on one of those river sites that you can see up by the river. At this point, I decide, well, as soon as Santa Maria has finished repairing itself, it is going to go over with more wood and more tools and more bricks. About 20, of 20 tools, 40 bricks, and that's going to last us for a very long time. Let's see, what else am I doing here? 
looking at if, looking to see if we have enough food and enough cider and all of these things. And it does look like some of these buildings are actually at the point of breaking or burning down. So I decide to uh Game save. Yeah, I decide to destroy them for the time being. So that and you know, just place new buildings so that uh they don't burn down, basically. That's that's the thing. Right, so our ship is finished, and I'm sending it back over to Kurast. Uh, let's see, all of this stuff is still full. I have to wait for the goods to get here. But uh, yeah, at this point as well, I, I decided, I was like, oh, maybe I should uh, invest in a road over here. And then I later on decide I should not, because actually what now happens is that this small market building sends over a cart towards the crop farm. Which takes way too long. At this point it's like, oh, I'm running low on fish. I should build another fishery. So I decide to build one over here. And I don't want to build one in my harbor area. So I decide against that. And I can't build it anywhere else. So I'm just going to have to look at this. And I figured, oh well, I can place one on Kurast as well. Which is uh, which is what I'm going to do later on. Like I'm looking at Vanadis right now, and it's like, oh yeah, it has four slots, so we can actually transport four different kinds of goods over in the direction that we need to. So I can actually build a fishery here, uh, get fish from this island, as well as leather jerkins, and beer and bread. So I'm setting it up like that at the moment. So I'm just going into this uh, into this area. And it's like, oh yeah, load all fish and unload it at Goldford. And then I'm setting up the jerkin route as well already. So that the jerkins will be loaded and unloaded. And then we have all the holes in our ship finished up. And then of course I give a new name to route number 3. And I'm calling it the carpet route. So it's a little bit easier to see where actually everything is actually going. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's time to build a pig farm. I'm running low on money. Which is a problem. But... Uh, I'm going to be able to solve that, and I'm just looking for a good place to build a pig farm. And I figure, well, this up here is probably the best place. And I just need to see about the best possible location to build these these farms. And actually build one pig one field too much. One of your plants has stopped producing goods. But I do, I do find out, I do realize this at some point. It's like, oh, I have five instead of four. I can I can delete one, so I get rid of that one. Uh, I do need two to be at maximum efficiency. Let me give you a hand. But first, I think I yeah I decide to build the tannery first, so it can get started on producing some uh, some jerkins for us, even if it's not going to be at full productivity. It is going to use up some of the salt, and it is going to use up some of the pig farms or uh, the pig skins. And that's about all it needs, really, yeah. And then I decided, like, oh, maybe I can sell some of this brine, because, well, I need the money. Oh, I'm so and I, glad I'm, you're here. I'm basically swimming in brine. I have way too much, and so I might as well sell some of it and get some money. But I really don't... I, I only have 68 gold at the moment, or 73 right now. And that means, well, I can't build the extra pig farm that we need. So I'm going to have to try to sell some stuff. Luckily, some quests do pop up, and this is at the point of like, oh yeah, this uh, market cart is actually going all the way to the crop farm, which is really, really annoying, and it shouldn't happen. No goods are being carried on one of your trading routes. And Helena Flores is settling another island. Not entirely sure where she is actually doing it. Land seizure, it says. I think I'm checking it out later on. I should. Yeah, here we go. So she uh, captured this island. I didn't really care that much about it. Alright, and here we look as like, oh, one ton of leather jerkins has already been produced, but it's not getting enough pig skins, even though the pig farm is running at 100%, because we one pig farm does not produce enough. We need to have the second one. But with only plus 33 income in taxes, it doesn't do a lot of good for us, you know, our 120 gold is going to stay at 120 gold pretty much. Or at least for a very long time. It's going to take a very long time to get back up the funds. So at this point I was like, oh, maybe I should try to sell some more stuff, but I don't know. We'll see, right? 
Yeah, and I really should try to uh, take the monastery brewery up to the north there and try to put it down a little bit more so it's actually in range of the herb farm. I think that will be a lot more productive. But that's something I can only do in the next episode, really. Which is unfortunate. At this point, I can sell the 2 tons of wood and the 30 tons of brine. I'd be delighted it to doesn't sell for you. a whole lot. I'd be happy to sadly. help you. And we have an enemy henchman again in Goldford, which is really annoying because the city is now a lot bigger and it's a lot harder to actually see this guy now. And I do find him pretty quickly, luckily. Just in time to prevent something much worse from happening. Alright, and I do notice there is a quest marker Couldn't at the, you do the tavern there. For us beggars too? It's just a wee favor. A beggar asks us to send out a search party to two islands to find a missing person. So this is what I'm going to do. And it gives us gold coins as well. Quite a lot, in fact. So I'm, I immediately want to get the Santa Maria to go over there and get started on this quest. It does give us 22 minutes to do so. And the islands that we need to search are pretty close by, actually. So you can see this is a small island over here that needs to be searched. And a small island to the north. And it only requires 3 tons of fish and 3 tons of bread, I think, and I have enough of all of those. So I can actually search for it without problem. Still not enough money to buy it to build with him. And at this spells. point Garibaldi is offering a quest as well. And this makes things a little bit more complicated because... Well, we need to escort 2 ships out of 4 from his, from his uh, harbor. And they will... I have to be there in 15 minutes. So things will be a little bit rushed. Uh, at this point, I think it's pretty close to me deciding that, well, this is going to be the end of the episode pretty soon. And uh, I'm going to try to finish these quests later on in another episode. Because this is a little bit too much. You know, this, uh, I've already been playing for half an hour. And, well, there we go. This is the end of the video. So, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see more. And I'll see you guys for the next video.